Camera set. All right, back projection. Cue music. In 2018, a biographical comedy drama based on Laurel and Hardy's 1953 tour of the UK was released to theatres. Titled Stan and Ollie, it starred Steve Coogan as Stan and John C. Riley as Ollie and was written by Jeff Pope, produced by Faye Ward and directed by John S. Baird. John C. Riley was nominated for Best Actor in the Motion Picture Musical or Comedy category at the 76th Golden Globe Awards. At the 72nd British Academy Film Awards, the film earned three nominations, including Best Actor in a Leading Role for Steve Coogan. While the film is an incredible and affectionate tribute to the boys, it uses a fair amount of artistic licence and its story differs from real-life events. In Stan and Ollie, the film shows Stan Laurel at Fox Studios ready to sign a contract. However, Oliver, or Babe Hardy, doesn't attend because he's still at Hal Roach Studios making the Elephant film. The movie's actual title was Zenobia. In reality, after leaving the Hal Roach Studios in 1940, Laurel and Hardy made six films with Fox Studios and two films for MGM between 1941 and 1945. Therefore, Babe actually did turn up to sign the contracts. Zenobia was made in 1938, when Stan's contract with Roach had terminated, and he was unwilling to sign a new contract with Roach until Hardy's had expired too. That way, they could sign contracts together at the same time. It was the next best thing to having a joint contract. Although Stan and Ollie portrays both actors remaining bitter about the Zenobia movie and eventually having an argument in public about it, in reality, it was never an issue for them. By all accounts, they always remain friends and never had a falling out. That's the lovely fairy tale that's true about Laurel and Hardy, is that, you know, I mean, I knew Lucille Hardy for 15 years, and she said, I never once heard the boys have any crossword with each other. Uh, they, they were not particularly socially close, and that may be one reason why they lasted so long. Uh, but she but she said when we were on tour together we were in each other's pockets for you know months at a time and still you know if anything the the friendship got stronger this is not uh, a fabrication they really genuinely cared about each other and uh, she said especially when babe's health was was getting to be questionable stan was you know watching over him like a mother hen they there was a genuine affection there Stan and Ollie also fails to mention the fact that Babe Hardy appeared in two further films without Stan, The Fighting Kentuckian in 1949, starring John Wayne, and Riding High in 1950, starring Bing Crosby. If Zenobia was such a big contentious issue between them, it's doubtful Babe would have appeared in two more films without Stan. In one scene in the biopic, when Ollie falls ill, tour manager Bernard Delfont convinces Stan to temporarily form a new comedy partnership with a comedian named Nobby Cook. Due to his loyalty towards Babe, however, Stan backs out at the last minute, causing the show to be cancelled. Nobby Cook was a fictional character created for the Stan and Ollie film. There was never any attempt to form a new partnership. In reality, Babe suffered a mild heart attack in Plymouth in May 1954, he recovered at the Grand Hotel and both comedians sailed back to the United States on June the 2nd. Babe Hardy sadly passed away in 1957. Laurel and Hardy toured the UK as part of a variety show with several different acts on the bill in 1947, 1952 and in 1953-54. They had also visited the UK for a well-earned holiday back in 1932. However, the enormous crowds that greeted them everywhere they went prevented any relaxation they might have initially hoped for. The Stan and Ollie film presented a world in which Laurel and Hardy had lost their popularity and showed them initially playing to almost empty theatres. In reality, their tours were highly successful. The crowds that greeted them at each public event can easily be compared to Beatlemania. Only on their final tour in 1953-54 did audience numbers occasionally fall, but certainly not to the level suggested by the movie. Contemporary reviews of this tour were also mixed, most likely due to Babe's failing health. Laurel and Hardy's film producer, Hal Roach, was nothing like how he was depicted in the biopic. 
In one of the film's early sequences, Stan Laurel is heard complaining to Babe Hardy about the low wages that they are receiving compared to those of some of their contemporaries at other studios. In fact, all actors and crew employed at the Hal Roach Studios were extremely well paid. For instance, in 1934, Roach drew a salary of $2,000 a week. Babe Hardy also received $2,000 a week, while Stan Laurel was paid $3,500 a week. Therefore, Stan was earning more money than the owner of the studio. This was, of course, compensation for the many extra hours Stan spent working with the writers before and during the production and then working with editors such as Burt Jordan after filming was completed. If certain scenes didn't play well in the previews, Roach never objected to spending more time and money to improve the film. According to Laurel and Hardy film historian Randy Scretvet, Roach actually lost money by making the three and four reel films because the agreement was for a set number of two reelers. On making the four reel Laurel and Hardy film Bo Hunks, Hal Roach told Scretvet, quote, It was already sold as a two reeler. We couldn't get any more dough out of all the circuits because they'd already bought it. But it was just one of those things. It was intended to be a two reel comedy, but it kept getting funnier. End quote. Roach kept Laurel and Hardy on separate contracts that expired six months apart. This was to encourage them to stay at his studio. While some would say that this was a manipulative arrangement, it is understandable that Hal Roach wanted to keep the biggest comedy stars of the day at his studio, especially considering the fact that his first major star, Harold Lloyd, left his studio in 1923 to produce his own films. In the Laurel and Hardy Encyclopedia, Glenn Mitchell writes, quote, Roach permitted his employees a mostly free hand with an agreeable environment. Most agree that there was no finer boss. End quote. Speaking about the studio, Roy Seawright, head of the optical effects department, said, quote, There's been no other studio to date like it. MGM, Fox, Universal, they were nothing but machines. The Roach lot was very individual, and the people there had talent with a wonderful sense of humour. The Roach Studio was nicknamed The Lot of Fun because it was a comedy studio and it was a lot of fun. End quote. Film historian and author Richard W. Bann often quotes Patsy Kelly who said, quote, Hal Roach was the best boss I ever had in the industry. I was practically ashamed to take the money. End quote. While Stan and Ollie is a fictional reimagining of the events and is indeed creative with the facts, it's undoubtedly an excellent tribute to the boys' work and legacy. Many sceptics have been astonished by the skilled performances of Steve Coogan and John C. Riley, and most agree that they couldn't have chosen anyone better to play the parts. Quote, Much of the time you feel like you'll be holding the real duo, so thoroughly conceived are the actors' physicality and performances. End quote. That was Todd McCarthy in The Hollywood Reporter. In addition, the costumes and set designs for the film are nothing short of phenomenal. The attention to detail in this area is to be commended. For instance, when recreating the famous soft shoe shuffle dance sequence from their 1937 feature Way Out West, the filmmakers sourced the exact film footage used for the back projection playing behind Laurel and Hardy in the original film. Most importantly, though, the film helped to put Laurel and Hardy back in the limelight and encouraged parents to show their children the greatest comedy films of all time. Their timeless humour appeals to all ages, and this film has helped introduce them to a new generation. Stan and Ollie is a very funny and moving film made with genuine affection for the comedy of Laurel and Hardy. <laughs>